What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Ben Wright Reactions. Uh, today, I've got a video from Team Coco entitled, uh, Bill Burr Can't Help But Laugh When Watching the News, uh, from the Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend podcast. So I guess this is going to be uh, Conan and Bill Burr sitting around talking uh, to my favorite people. Should be funny. Um, Always up for a good laugh. So now we're just going to jump right on in. Here we go. I want to talk to you about this this project, this movie that you're working on, because it's a it's something that you and I have talked about because we are friends. We have dined together. We've hung out. Our wives have hung out. Um, <laughs> just pictures. Okay. Big they know each other. And candelabras. <laughs> oh, oh, we did. There was, I had a suit of armor brought in and put in the corner. <laughs> You're talking about uh, th this movie that you've made is a subject that's near and dear to your heart. It's about being dads. Older yeah, dads, right? Old dads, yeah. Old dads. There was something that came about by, you know, uh, not getting my shit together and having kids really late in life. Like mm -hmm. I'm 54, my kids are five and two. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! And um, I didn't realize like how much the world had changed. Like my daughter's in kindergarten now, and I was in kindergarten 50 years ago. So just the whole way that they teach, like everything, literally, I'd be like, "Oh, you're on the jungle gym," and she'd be like, "It's called the structure." <laughs> and, I, and then I'd be like, "Really?" Yeah. And then I'd be like, "Oh my god, I said jungle. Am I, you know, did I, was that borderline racist now? Like, what did I just say?" And right, you just start right. freaking out, and uh, you know, just sort of, it it lives sort of in that world, and then also all of this this world now of where, you know, you you go back into somebody's Twitter account eight years and find a bad tweet and they're like this is who this guy is this guy's an asshole and, and it's like i always looked at it like you had to go back eight years before this guy was an asshole that's an that's an amazing like lou gehrig run <laughs> of not being an asshole <laughs> if you went seven years like this guy was totally cool but in 2014 oh you know, that one random Wednesday, he was really in a mood. Yeah. And and it was just weird. Someone who, I, you know, I lean left. I'm not 100% left. It's sort of like, you know, um, I just thought that whole era was really fascinating to watch people, like, just trying to just sort of ruin people. Like, I understood the beginning of it when they were going after these monstrous people, but then it just became this, this you know, like these ticky-tack misdemeanors bullshit, and they were just like, just burn them down. It was like a Frankenstein movie. Like, they were all coming up the fucking hill. So um, it sort of, you know, subtly lives in that world, too. Right. And, 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 you know, one of the things that I relate to you on is we both come from, like I say, a similar part of the country. I'm a little bit older than you, and but I do relate very much... When you talk about like being Boston, a dad, that's where they're from. Uh, you often relate it to when you were contrast it with when we were kids, and that's something that hits home with me because, uh, you know, I had kids later in life. Now they're teenagers, but in the early stages, I remember thinking this does not resemble the childhood that I have in any way. Yeah, you know, because first of all, the uh, the fact that. Um, so much care and attention is spent on each child. <laughs> it's something that was... No, I'm not saying that. I love my parents, but it was a different attitude. There were that six of us. seems true. And I remember very clearly at any given time, if you ask my mother or my father, you know, where's Conan? They'd be like, I don't know. You know, he's... Yeah. You know, you know no one knew exactly where you were. They uh, just sent you outside... Like, that was a lot of it. They just sort of sent you outside, and you went out, and you just met other kids your age and came up with stuff to do when you were outside, and then eventually you ran into older kids, and then they just beat the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> and then, that sounds familiar. And then you came up like I, that. I, I did a, a cartoon for Netflix called F is for Family." And one of the, one of the first episodes is a scene where the young me and this friend are up in a tree and these guys start throwing rocks at us and shooting fireworks. And that was based on a true story. There wasn't fireworks, but it was just me and a friend of mine were climbing trees. We're just climbing a tree because that's what you did before there was no internet. That was like, that was going online, climbing a tree and risking your life. We built tree houses. So we climbed up this tree and these bigger kids came by and they saw us up there and they just started throwing rocks at us until their arms got tired. We were up there. Like the bigger kids would come by and just steal our back. stuff while and we were in the tree. And just climbed down the tree, and then those guys were assholes. But I remember that, yeah. and I bring this up because the minute that our uh, my daughter could drive or my, my son could drive, 
my wife would check and she could show me on the phone where they were. And I thought that's just blows my mind. It doesn't, wow, it doesn't, like feel, that yeah, yeah, like it doesn't feel 90s, right to me 80s. that we are that accountable all the time. And sometimes I wonder if I'm just jealous of there's a, it's, there's a different, there's like a care and attention. Oh, I see what you mean. Do, do you know what I mean? And I wonder because when I watch your comedy, when I, when I watched you at Red Rocks and you're talking about anytime you're talking about your child or your dad, how the, how the house was tense or there was anger, or people weren't dealing with things appropriately. Uh, I think, yeah, I know what you're talking about. It was an era. And I think I sometimes, when I'm seeing my family and my wife's handling everything so beautifully, for some reason, I become enraged. <laughs> no, I like, get that. Why? Where was it? Where, what do you mean? They eat? You're looking at me in the jealous. eye and talking to them? What, no, what is I, this? I totally get that. I remember this one time being in like uh, a grocery store or something like that. And I saw this this kid. He started crying about something. And his mother went over and started hugging him and comforting him. And I immediately, I just felt this urge to go over and trip this little kid. <laughs> oh my God. And then, yeah, another fair. time, I remember the grocery yeah, store. Because that's where I, you know, moms had like, kids and stuff. And this kid was going like, hey, mom, can I have candy? And she was just like, no. And then he started crying. And it made me laugh. I was want to be like, yeah, get used to that, kid. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. so you enjoy the unhappiness and pain of a child. I thought I did. But <laughs> what? What I un what I <laughs> I realized Sorry. it had nothing to do with the kid. That was just me with all of my bullshit. I was jealous of the kid who was getting hugged. Uh -huh. And then I was laughing at the other kid because I related. Like, I remember when a long time ago I saw Sling Blade when it was uh -oh. in the movie theater. And I remember when, when, when he zoomed that guy out of the house in the wheelchair, uh -huh. he's like, get out of my fucking house. And he zoomed him out. And the guy was all helpless. I roared with laughter. <laughs> and I remember I was with him. <laughs> <laughs> these 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 actors that I was working on something and they looked at me in this horrified way right and I, I couldn't explain it. you had to be a comedian to understand like I think actors and comedians they process pain differently right where actors I think are more like examining it where comedians you just pave it over and it's like you're just laughing not because you're happy that happened to someone in a wheelchair you're just laughing <laughs> just how fucking mean it was. The absurdity of it. I, I told you about this. That one time my wife was on the plane with me and she we were going somewhere far. So she had like a, a tablet and I started watching a movie and she had fallen asleep. And I was I was watching a movie and I was laughing so hard I woke her up. And then she, you know, when you don't know what somebody's laughing at and you just start laughing. She's like, what are you, what are you laughing at? And I was trying to hide it. And she looked and I was watching Precious. I don't even... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, oh. It was literally oh my God! Some, some shit. It just gets so mean. It's just so mean. It, it pushes, pushes you through yeah. into comedy again. She was. I, the mother said wow. something so fucking mean, and then they just cut to her face, and she was. <laughs> she was so sad. I just. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I'm being honest, I was wheezing. I was literally like laying in the. Eye. So I was laughing fairness. so hard. The woman I didn't know on the other side of my wife was laughing, and then my wife started punching me in the shoulder. <laughs> just gave her like the tablet. <laughs> No, she's so you're that's one of my favorite things. It'd be great if you were my a movie wife critic. has such really a big heart. And we're always watching TV and she's forever getting teared up and I am laughing my ass off. Like she used to watch the biggest loser. And these these fat people would be crying. I can't about all the cookies and burgers they were eating. And they that's were crying. true, that's what they did. Like they lost a dog or something. And she would be crying with him, and I would just be laughing my ass off. So, so. No, most of the world is starving. That's why. Like, I've been to, I went to, like, India, and I saw this level yeah. of poverty that I just maybe want to adopt every kid over here. And then you just come back to America, and there's these slovenly people. I just can't stop eating Oreos. And it was just so fucking hilarious. Oh. oh. And, uh. Oh, 
this won't air. And then, no, and then, then it's like... Uh, I'm glad it's here. This is hilarious. It is because my wife no one gets, will ever hear this. My box. wife gets mad at me for laughing. It makes it like... Oh, dude, I have worse ones than that. I got worse ones Let's, than that. We might as well get it out now because we're... Sure. I can't say safe. this one to protect people. Uh... You guys aren't going to laugh at this one because you're told you're not supposed to. No, no, that's not this crowd. All right, this some good... dude beat the shit out of his girlfriend, right? Well, you're off to a good start. I don't... You know wow. I'm in the crowd. You had them. You had them. You're like, yeah, I can top that. See where this goes. How else are you supposed to watch the news? Am I least supposed to be going, like, oh, <laughs> for the whole time? Or you can laugh. I mean, it's a choice. I have to but go. how does it help me? But how? Okay, I want you to. I want to hear you pull this out. So my yeah, wife was yeah. so sad about it that I had to make a joke because I wasn't mature enough to be sad with her. Right. So I was going like, "What do you think she said? What do you think that, that last oh, thing she God said? Sake. Right? You know? Yeah, exactly. So she gets all mad, right? So <laughs> she got really mad. Why did she marry you? <laughs> She's lovely. I've met her. She's wonderful. So then, like a week later, my mother-in-law comes over, right? <laughs> and the fucking story comes on the news, and after the story's over, she goes, "I know I shouldn't say this." My wife goes, "Mom, don't say it." And she just goes, "I wonder what the last thing she said." <laughs> and the mother-in-law laughing. My my mother-in-law died laughing, and my wife stormed out of the room. Jumped out of the room. That's all. Yeah, awesome. but at the end of the day, neither one of us beat her up. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> she can't hear us laugh. I'm not happy that that happened. Well, there's I a, don't understand what the fucking news is. It's Wait. just like, hey, here's a bunch of shit you can't fix that happened that was horrible. Ah! Good you know, Jim. <laughs> At my gym, True. they literally play CNN, and it's just the whole state of California's on fire. School shootings and shit. It's like I'm coming here to get away from this shit. I'm on a fucking elliptical, and I gotta watch people's houses burning down. Right, right. How long are you supposed? To, you're trying to make this seem like three hours on the elliptical. So we should should be showing like I don't know, Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> <laughs> I think this Fair. is going good, Cone. I think it's going really well. <laughs> I think it's going great. Yeah, I agree, Cone. Well, that's going to do it for uh, Conan O'Brien and Bill Burr uh, sitting around talking on uh, Conan's podcast, Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend. Uh, that was put together and put up by Team Coco. That's, uh, of course, Conan O'Brien's channel. So check that out if you want to see more of him. And uh, as far as that video goes, that kind of went off the rails there a little bit at the end, which is um, always fun to see two comedians. Uh, cutting up and making each other laugh uh always entertaining fun a little bit insightful um yeah good stuff with that um if you guys out there have any other videos or anything you want me to check out on this channel please feel free to put it down in the comments always looking for new cool interesting stuff and like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content that helps me out and once again until next time Thanks for tuning in.